probably will not shock you to learn that Senator Mitch McConnell is not in favor of giving more money to states that are battling this pandemic. But what is shocking is comments that states should just declare bankruptcy because Republicans don't want to fund state retirement and health benefits. So friend of the show, Davis Rota, he sums this up as McConnell to Kentucky, drop dead. From the famous New York Post headline, his latest column describes how the Senate Majority Leader's decision has actually put his own constituents at risk. And David joins us now via Skype to expand on that. David, let's go into this. So it's not just Kentucky. I mean, McConnell was obviously talking about all state and local governments. What is the rationale for letting states go bankrupt at this time? Well, it's been a long Republican goal to try to cut uh, public employee uh, pay, health care benefits, retirement benefits. They, essentially, states, uh, state governments have these large pension systems. They say to public employees, if you come to work for the state government, uh, one of the things that we will try to attract you to work for the state government, we won't pay in many, in most cases, uh, the same level of wages as the private sector. But one thing we can offer is a relatively uh, stable retire set of retirement benefits. And there's been a situation where states over many, many years as the employer have not made their required payments to the pension system every year. So in employment terms, imagine if you are working someplace and they, your employer promises you, let's say, a 401k and you're working there for 10 years and then you realize 10 years later your employer actually hasn't been making the 401k contributions. Well, what's happened in, in states is that the states have turned around and said, well, you know what, we haven't been making our payments, so now we probably have to cut the promised benefits that we promised you, the employees. And so Republicans have been trying to um, essentially say, in, in, instead of uh, backfunding uh, those pension shortfalls, which, by the way, were exacerbated by market losses during the financial crisis and now during the coronavirus crisis, instead of backfilling all that, uh, the Republicans have for years put forward the idea of simply letting states declare bankruptcy and just walk away from those obligations and basically go to those uh, those workers and say, we're just going to cut your benefits. Right. The reason why McConnell would need to do this, why a lot of Republicans would need uh, a, a, a law saying that you that the states can declare bankruptcy is because one, under current laws, states can't use the bankruptcy courts for this purpose. And two, a lot of states have their own laws on the books in their constitutions and on their books saying that if you if you the state has made a promise to these employees, you can't just you know rip up the contract. So so McConnell's trying to float the idea to put in place a new law that would say actually uh, the federal government can pass a law saying states can in fact rip up these mm. contracts. Yeah, and I want to so, make it clear, though, it's not all Republicans doing this. Senator Rob Portman no, actually has come out against this. This is a much more like a Heritage Foundation, Mitch yes. McConnell axis here, does not represent the whole caucus. Yeah. <laughs> Important After caveat the here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just lay this out, though, like in super concrete terms. What, looking at the state of Kentucky, what type of workers are we talking about? What would it ultimately mean for the pensions that they've like planned their lives around and worked to earn and part of why they signed up for the job? What are sort of the specifics of how this could look, knowing that, of course, the details are, you know, would be dependent on circumstance? Well, that's the amazing thing here is, is Kentucky's role in this. Mitch McConnell put this plan forward and said he 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 is against so-called blue state bailouts. He doesn't want a, a, a federal aid to states to be used to deal with these pension uh, shortfalls because he essentially portrayed that as a blue state problem. Except the problem for him is that Kentucky has one of the biggest, if not the single biggest pension crisis in the entire country, his home state. His home state has a deeply underfunded pension system, which got uh, uh, basically hit really hard by major investment losses, including investment losses associated with some of the big Wall Street firms that uh, whose donors, whose executives have been big donors to Mitch McConnell. So. Kentucky has a huge pension crisis, so big that there were mass protests last year by, by teachers as the then Republican governor, Matt Bevin, was pushing forward a reform plan, so-called, that would have involved uh, cuts to uh, teacher pay, uh, teacher um, uh, retirement benefits, and the like. And, and Bevin, it should be mentioned, ended up losing his run uh, for re-election. So, so the, the issue here is Mitch McConnell represents the epicenter of the pension crisis and is going forward in Washington, putting forward in Washington a plan that would essentially make that crisis potentially far worse 
for up to 500,000 people in Kentucky, we're talking about teachers, firefighters, first responders, police officers, all sorts of government workers, many of whom are on the front lines of this crisis. We're talking about potentially, if, if a bankruptcy proceeding went forward in the state of Kentucky, uh, big cuts to those uh, government workers and retirees, their promised retirement benefits, some of their promised medical benefits in the middle of this national emergency. Yeah, I think that's a key point there. And and, and this is, uh, as we covered here, Chris, we covered the uh, the Kentucky election extensively, which is that one, that is the main reason for Bevin's loss was actually he was upside down in public support because of the teacher, because of trying to cut Medicare and many of these things. And so it just raises the question of, I mean, why why would anybody do this for domestic political benefit? That's the big question. And I think, the, you know, Mitch McConnell is not... A, a dummy. I mean, th this guy is a sophisticated political operator. My guess, and I'm just guessing here, but my guess is he thinks, he, and he's running for re-election. My guess is he thinks he's got the election so well locked down that he doesn't have to care that he's putting forward a plan that that makes makes the Heritage Foundations, makes the the the, the, the folks in Washington uh, on on the right so happy that he doesn't have to care uh, about what it would it might mean for his own state which is in a particular uh, a particularly intense emergency there's also this point that you know many of these um, government workers are perceived to be a cons lean towards the democratic party uh, that and, and certainly their unions have been supportive of Democratic candidates. So it's not a constituency that Mitch McConnell necessarily feels like he has to to answer to uh, because of the of the political calculation there. But but that's a pretty big risk, right? I mean, you've got 500,000 people in the state of Kentucky uh, who who this could affect. You've got a, an election just happened in which this was an animating issue. So the question really will be is, as McConnell pushes this forward, I mean, is there going to be an unpredictable for him, an unpredictable backlash where it actually does cost him politically in his own state? Well, and that is the thing, and you point out the election, and you guys know I lived in Kentucky and I followed this extremely closely because it wasn't just the teachers movement. It was that the entire state essentially took the side of the teachers. Why? Because we all know a teacher, right? Because in a lot of these small towns, the school system was the largest employer. These were like bedrock human beings and institutions within small towns in Kentucky. Um, so to think of like teachers or firefighters or police officers as a Democratic Party constituency, that to me seems insane. Yeah. Well, the, 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 the trick uh, uh, is going to be uh, that whether the debate goes along the terms that the that, that proponents of McConnell's plan have tried to make the debate uh, follow for years, which is this, which is they have tried to pit uh, teachers and other government workers against everyone else with a narrative that the supposedly greedy, lavishly remunerated government workers uh, are the ones who are responsible for the underfunding of other priorities for everyone else in the state. So, for instance, you know, teachers want uh, their supposedly huge pension costs. These, you know, that they're, they're living the high life on 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 wonderful pensions. Uh, that's what's starving the government's ability to pay for things like roads or pay for things like the you know the school buildings themselves. That's the way the debate has been framed for many many years. But I think now you've seen in more recent years, teachers uh, and other public workers making the opposite case, which is to say, making the case, for instance, in Kentucky, in Kentucky that Wall Street firms uh, uh, who are very politically connected, their losses with in the investments in the uh, in the pension, the pension gives it over to Wall Street firms to invest. Those losses have been a problem. Mm -hmm. it, it had made the problem worse. That yeah. the legislature has used the money that was supposed to go into the pension fund has used the money for other things. For instance, like like tax cuts and the like. And right. so so you're starting to see a different story being told. And it's gonna. I, I, my guess is that it really could play out once again in another election in Kentucky. Certainly. Well, and, and to your point, this was not like a blue state thing. There were teachers movements in blue states, but this was mostly, this was West Virginia, this was Kentucky, this was Oklahoma, this was Arizona. And I, in particular in West Virginia, the case that was made from teachers was y'all give away the store to big business. 
But when we just want decent pay and for you to keep the commitments that you made, then suddenly, oh, how will we pay for it? And in those red states dominated by Republicans, teachers won that debate overwhelmingly. That's why there is now a Democratic governor in the state of Kentucky. So very interesting story. Everybody needs to go and subscribe yes. to your newsletter. Letter. What is it? Sirota.substack.com. Is that right? That's right. Sirota.substack.com. Thanks for the plug. I appreciate it. Of and I course. hope people will subscribe. They, yes. should, they absolutely go should. We're going to highlight it here on the show. I hope you don't mind me sharing this, Dave, but you once told me you have a photographic memory for things that you hate. <laughs> and I think it's part of why you pull in these pieces that other people don't see and, you know, and really tell a story and uh, illuminate things that really need to be illuminated. So thank yeah. you and congratulations. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Of see course. You. All right. We'll see. We'll have more rising for you after this.